Thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today I was reading in the book of 2 Kings, chapter 7. In the beginning of this chapter, I read of some lepers in verse 3 that were outside of the city. They were quarantined. Today I wanted to speak about a good quarantine. But before that, I know that the holiday season is here. Today is Christmas Eve. Many people feel isolated. Basically, the word quarantine means to isolate. And many um, are isolated from loved ones during this time, maybe because of family problems. Maybe there was a death in the family. Um, now with this Omicron uh, variant of the virus, many people have to cancel their uh, Christmas get-togethers and quarantine, so to speak. And it could be very difficult. And my heart goes out to you who are struggling during this holiday season. We do celebrate the, uh, the birth of Jesus Christ, although he wasn't born um, on December 25th. According to the Jewish calendar, he was probably born in the uh, beginning of October. Uh, but we do set aside a day to celebrate his birth. And for myself also, knowing that there's many loved ones that I grew up with, my father, my mother, my younger brother, my aunt, my grandmother, they're all gone. And yes, I have my wife and my children and others that I'll celebrate with today. Um, but it does leave a hole in the heart and you feel isolated. You have that um, quarantine mentality and it could drive people to despair. But I want to encourage us that there is a good quarantine. What I mean by that is as born again Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, we are to quarantine like these lepers were set apart, or isolated from the city. We are to be set apart and isolated for God and away from the values of this world. First Peter chapter one, verses 14 to 16, you can read there, basically the apostle Peter, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is telling us as followers of Christ, we are not to follow the former lusts that we followed in this world or in our own flesh, but we are to be holy, set apart. That's what the word holy means, to be set apart for the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter seven, verse one, Apostle Paul reminds us that we are to put off all filthiness and to be sanctified, holy. And a little before that, the Apostle Paul mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 18, what does righteousness and unrighteousness have in common? We are not to be too um, together with the people of this world, too friendly with this world, if we're truly going to follow the Lord. Now, I get it. We get together with family members and friends at times, and not everybody is saved. But we shouldn't have our affections with them. What I mean by that is, when I first got saved in 1985, to use my own life as an experience, I rejoiced in the Lord. I went to church on Friday nights, youth night, twice on Sundays. I was on fire for God. Two years later, in 1987, the man who brought me to Christ, he died of the AIDS virus. And I look back, I got angry with God that I finally met someone in my life that I felt truly cared for me spiritually. And he was taken at a young age and I rebelled against the Lord and started to hang out with the people, places and things that I shouldn't have been doing spiritually. That is not how we are to live our lives as Christians, my friends. We are to be isolated from this world, set apart for God, in service for Christ. When we're with unsaved people, we should be witnessing for the Lord trying to win them over, doing good deeds for them, but not being attached to them too much. For all those that are struggling, my friends, with this spirit of quarantine, isolation, can I encourage you that as Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27 tells us, there's nothing too strong, nothing impossible for God. We might feel lonely, lonely at times, but we're not alone. God is always with us. And at times in our lives, as Malachi chapter 3, verses 1 to 3 speak of, I encourage you to look at those verses, and 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, basically those scripture verses talk about the testing of our faith. Uh, in ancient times, there were people called refiners, uh, coppersmiths, and they would uh, burn gold, precious metals in a furnace to remove dross that made it look very dull, so that it became more shiny and that the person who was doing this work could see his image in that object. 
And in the same way, God will remove the dross of pride and anger and bitterness from us to a fiery furnace of affliction at times, the testing of our faith. But it is a good thing. For you that are struggling right now with being isolated for whatever, whatever reason, my brothers and sisters, I encourage you to look to the Lord, to pray. Read the word. Know that his presence is with you. And yes, I know there's many people struggling with different things right now in their lives. I have a uh, prayer group on Facebook that has grown so much and I'm thankful to God. And I look at it at times and there's so many struggling right now with different situations in their lives. But, and I do pray for them and um, I ask that you keep me and my family in prayer as we um, celebrate the birth of Christ in this season, but also struggling with the loss of loved ones. It brings, the, the holiday season, Christmas brings up a lot of emotions in different people. Good, bad, or indifferent. So I hope today's devotional video will encourage us all to know that, yes, we might be quarantined again with this variant of the virus, and we don't know to what extent. I work in a public school system, and I heard come January, we're gonna go remote again. Uh, it's having a bad effect on young children, damaging effect on children socially, econo I mean, emotionally, and for the parents economically. But let us remember that even when we feel alone or lonely, we're truly not alone because God, through Christ, is always with us. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters in Christ. We'll see this devotional video today on social media. Lord, I pray that whatever's burdening them during this holiday season, isolation, being quarantined for whatever reason, maybe some are not feeling well. Lord, I pray that your presence be with them, that they'll draw closer to Christ through the fiery furnaces of affliction and more, become more shinier, more of use for you, O Lord God, through these difficult times. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you all today, my brothers and sisters. Walk in the line of the Holy Spirit. Pray and read your Bible.